uh, the book of Acts chapter 5. God's people were doing what God had put in their heart to do, to burn for Jesus. And the apostles, the disciples, they are announcing Jesus everywhere. They are proclaiming Christ. People are getting saved. The church is growing. For crying out loud, Peter, who had, up until that moment, had foot and mouth disease. Every time he opened his mouth, something wrong happened. Peter is now filled with the Holy Spirit, opens up his mouth, and 3,000 people get saved in one sermon. The Holy Spirit's moving. God's people are being empowered. The culture is being shaken, and Rome is being threatened. And I want to tell you today that things have not changed Whenever God's people stand up for what is right, the powers that be are threatened. We've got a group of people right now that are smuggling Bibles into inland China. You might say, well, China's open to the gospel now. Yeah, yeah. As long as they can get UN support, they'll play that game. We're talking about getting Bibles into areas where there's no cameras. And why? Communism is terrified of the name of Jesus. And they beat those, and they cut the tongues off of those who continue to preach Christ. Look what's happening to your brothers and sisters in Cambodia right now, in Vietnam. Why? What's the deal? It's the same deal. When the disciples were preaching the gospel, people's lives were being changed. And the Bible tells us, through the Apostle Paul, that even those in Caesar's court had been converted. That's threatening. You got two powers at play according to the Bible and what's going on in the world. You've got the liberating power of the Holy Spirit that uses people. <laughs> Look, God, if he would have asked me for advice, I would have said the gospel is amazing. Just leave people out of it. Use angels or something. But don't use us. But, of course, God knows all things. He empowered you by the Holy Spirit to take the life that he's changed in your life and to tell others. And that's threatening to a dictatorial system. And Jesus said it perfectly clear. You're either going to serve God or mammon. Interesting, mammon was connected. Do you remember whose inscription this was in the coin Jesus asked? Caesar's, they said. Well, then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, but to God the things that are God's. Laws can be decided in Washington or in Sacramento. But just because a law is decreed doesn't make it godly, doesn't make it right, doesn't make it legal, mind you. Amen. Keep that in mind. You and I as Christians, and here comes the rub, we are a threat to an unbelieving system and an unbelieving world. And may we continue to be that threat if we're going to be faithful brothers and sisters in Christ because we answer to a higher court. We answer to the judge who will judge all judges in the end someday. But the disciples and the apostles were preaching the gospel. They were arrested. And the book of Acts tells us in chapter 5, beginning at verse 28, that they were commanded to no longer speak in Jesus' name. Let me ask you, what would you do? And what would the churches that you represent tonight, what would you do if a law was decreed from Sacramento or Washington, D.C., no more speaking in the name of Jesus? The name Jesus makes people uncomfortable. The Jesus name of the Bible, the Jesus Christ of the Bible will always make people uncomfortable because the Holy Spirit is honoring the Lord Jesus Christ. And ladies and gentlemen, we will never, and pastors, if you're here tonight, you will never win a popularity contest, ever. You were not called to win one. You were to stand even alone like a Bonhoeffer or a Martin Niemuller against the tide of tyranny to preach the everlasting gospel. And this is what is going to define our time. This is, a, this is the, the Kairos moment for the church. This is an awesome moment for us. I am praying, and I can say this as a pastor, I am praying that God would ignite the pulpits of America. There's, that's the only hope for America, is for pastors to catch fire. For pastors to catch fire, fearless being true to the word of God, to be able to say, listen, if you want to determine if we should be uh, obeying uh, Caesar or the laws or God, that's for you to debate. But as for us, we're going to obey God. The world is doing what the world is supposed to do. The world is designed to be Satan's pulpit, Satan's tool. Don't look to the unbelieving 
to make things right. I probably like you, I don't know, maybe more so for me. I'm out in my backyard. I'm, I'm uh, now lamenting I, for 30 seconds. I had heard uh, what the Supreme Court's decision was regarding marriage because I, I believe that it was bigger than just marriage. Believe me, the issue wasn't marriage. The enemy's got a far broader agenda and you will watch that happen in your life. You'll see it very soon. It will be no secret. And I was lamenting that, and the Lord said, and I felt just like Jonah. I spoke about this in a few weeks ago. Uh, I felt just like Jonah, and I was under the big sycamore tree in my backyard, and I was just saying, Lord, don't you see what's going on? I'm glad God doesn't listen to me sometimes. And when I got tired of complaining, or when he let me get tired of complaining, he said this to me, why are you disappointed? Why are you disappointed? Well, I'm disappointed because I wanted them to rule differently. Oh, you wanted them to rule in favor of what I've engineered, what I've created. Why are you looking, Jack, to the world to do the right thing? What, you can, Jack, if you keep your eyes on me, you'll never be disappointed no matter what they decide. Christian, pastor, listen. The reason why we feel chagrin and, and a little bit damp or dark because of what's going on, we're viewing it all wrong, everybody. I thank God that you're here. I want you to leave, and with this message, it'll be over, but it, I hope just beginning. I want you to be commissioned to get out of this building, to go out into that world out there, and by the grace of God, because you stand for righteousness, things will change because the believer has been commissioned to go do righteousness, even if all things go wrong. Even if courts overturn the will of the people, even if somebody issues a decree, you will no longer pray in Jesus' name. That happened in this community many years ago. This community was told by, the, by our local government back in those days, our chaplains can no longer pray in Jesus' name. Well, it just so happens that the chaplains were going to this church. So the, the head chaplain got a hold of me and said, Pastor, we, we're being told to no longer pray in the name of Jesus. What do we do? I said, come home, get out, abandon ship. Now, get out of there, flee from the city of destruction, said John Bunyan and Christian uh, in uh, Pilgrim's Progress. Get out of there, and here's the deal. So we rescinded our chaplains, but we had thousands of T-shirts printed up, and it said, I pray in Jesus' name. We got them out of the hands of people, and we told them, wear them all the time. When they stink, wash them and put them on again. And the mayor called and said, what are you doing? So what do you mean, what are we doing? You've got these shirts all over town saying, I pray in Jesus' name. That's right. Well, it's causing controversy. <laughs> they changed their policy. They went back to praying in Jesus' name. You say, oh, that's, you say, that's political. That's political. No church, wake up. That's not political. The world rushes in and says, you know what? No more prayer in Jesus' name. They raise their standard up and they declare a, a topic given to us by God Almighty. They declare it to be political, expecting us to put our tail between our legs and go back home and hide within the four walls of our church. And what happens? We are letting righteousness slip through our hands while we have the freedom to defend it, a unique opportunity that most people on the planet do not have. You and I are responsible for the time and the freedom we have. If you don't exercise freedom, you'll lose freedom. And so that's one thing, right? And when they stand and they say, you know what, we're going we're gonna to do this. We think boys and girls should be able to self-gender determination anytime they want. And boys 13 years of age should be able to use a girl's locker room shower. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? First of all, what, where was that law when I was 13? I would have loved that law. Ladies and gentlemen, that's perversion. That's sick. Oh, we can't say that we're Christians. You know what? If I had anything to do, if I could rewind the clock, I would say we've been, we've been unjustifiably, we've been wrong with our intentions, too polite in the sense that we've sacrificed righteousness in the, in the, on the altar of politeness. We need to say, listen, this is as far as this issue is going to go. No longer will this happen in our school board meetings where somebody pulls out a banana and puts on a condom to say that this is what we need to teach our kids. Excuse me? That is not going to happen to our kids. But listen, unless we stand up for righteousness, which is a commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ to stand for, I love what Pastor Cruz said earlier. Um, 
and he and I share exactly. Our brothers in the pulpit say, I just preached the gospel, brother. And he made it crystal clear. I don't need to add anything to what he said. The question is, what do God's people do after they've been preached to? You're supposed to go out and live it six days a week and come back for refueling on Sunday to go out and live it again until pastors understand that the pulpit literally shaped the formation of the greatest nation the world has ever seen. Read the sermons of the colonial pastors, 1730, 1740, 1750. Do you know what happened? People were sitting in their churches, go read their mail. That's one thing about good old revolutionary history. You can read all their mail. Sam Adams sits there. John Adams sits there. Patrick Henry sits there and says, you know what? These guys, these, these pastors are talking about liberty and freedom. Sam Adams got it. Sam Adams. Thomas Jefferson said, that guy understands the concept of freedom more than any individual. He is the spirit of the revolution. Sam Adams said, listen, this is not given by man. That's why our founding documents. Osama bin Laden targeted our founding documents. Did you know that? In an FBI investigation shortly after the attack on 9-11, the devotion given by Osama bin Laden to those uh, 19, to those 20 terrorists was a declaration that the Christian nation of America and its Christian founding documents must be destroyed. Isn't that amazing, public school system? They mock our founding documents, and yet our very arch enemy that wants to see Sharia law blanket this nation and undo a Judeo-Christian culture, they view the Constitution, Declaration of Independence, and the Bill of Rights. Bin Laden called them Christian documents. There is a word from the enemy of truth. Amazing. We need to stand. Do you have, how many of you have kids? Raise your hands. How many of you have grandkids? Raise your hands. We've got to stand. I may be preaching to the choir because you're here. Go and tell people. If we don't stand for our freedoms, we'll lose them. And we're losing them. But there's a movement going on. And I don't say a movement like join our movement. No, you know what? I'm not into human movements. God is starting to move. And I was out there underneath my tree, and I was so bummed, and God said, don't be disappointed. You trusted me. You'll never be disappointed, because if you follow me, you're going to wind up being on the right side of history if you obey me. Amen. And that's true for all of us. If you're a Christian today, or if, listen, if, it, if you obey him, he will always bless obedience. Always. He's bound to it. And so we, our prayer, this whole conference has been put on. And you know what? We don't know. We're debating in the back. Did we, do, did, did we do the right thing, making it free or not? Because some people you know, signed up but didn't show up. Should we charge money? Because if they got skin in the game, then people will come. Isn't it weird that we even got to talk like that? You know, if something's free, then it must be cheap, right? God's paid for this. God's brought these men in, in here. God's, God's brought this together. Why? What? What is the testimony? What is the testimony to this? Do righteously. I believe the Lord is looking across the earth right now, and I believe he's looking across America, and I believe he's looking in California. Look, I, I, I want God to move in California. You want to know why? Because we're a mockery. We are the left coast. We are crazy. But as I just shared with a bunch of uh, guys at lunchtime, I'm not ready to throw in the towel on California. The birthplace, mind you, of the Pentecostal movement was in Los Angeles. Might I remind you? And God bless the Pentecostal movement's commitment to missionary work around the world. Second to none. Gold rush changed the course of human history in the state you're sitting in right now. The technology boom, born in California. Computers, born in California. The aviation industry, born in California. You can go down a list of how God has moved in California. The movie industry, the Jesus people movement that I came out of, out of Costa Mesa, God was moving over and over again. God has strategically used California. He wants to say when it happens in California, it affects Nevada. Then it affects New York. Have you noticed that? What if the heathen just kept doing their heathen thing? We don't expect anything from them, but just to be ugly and be mean call names and say we're some kind of a phobia. They're going to do that. They're going to do it. That's what they do. That's okay. What if we, just us, what if there's, look, 12 people turn the world right side up? 
There's more than 12 people here right now. What if we decided to seek God's face for revival in California? What if God heard our cry? Because you know what? Let's be honest. All the stuff that things are trending, all the way things are going, well, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Hey, listen, you know what? You guys, um, sin and pleasure, carnality has an expiration date on it. We all know this. I came to Christ at the age of 19. Uh, I was living like uh, I had lived 40 years by the time I was 19. And uh, sex wasn't the answer. I tried all that. Money, you know what, only frustrated me. Because the more I got money, and I was a little stinker, man. At 19 years of age, I had too much money. And the more money I got, the more I squeaked when I walked. The more money I had, I wouldn't spend a penny. You know what happens? We set up idols. We seek them as our pleasure, and they become the very tyrant that destroys us. Well, I'm going to give myself the pleasure. You know what? Expiration date on it. I'm going to give myself the drugs. Expiration date on it. The world, listen, will rip you off every time. And I think Eric said it a moment ago. Somebody said it today, but let me say it again. We need to hold fast. We need to hold fast. Here's the reason why. There's a whole culture out there that, that right now is having sex all over itself, thinking they're having a great time, trying, and, and being convinced by the, pub, by the public square, the public school system, that they're gay, LBGTQ now questioning, all that stuff. You know what? Listen, they're going to be brokenhearted people soon. The party's going to be over soon. Oh, no, it's been legalized. I don't care what you call it. It's never legalized in the eyes of God. He knows you. He knows you're broken. Take it, take it from some of us who have lived the path where it's, it's not the answer. You haven't found that out yet. If you're watching, listening right now, maybe you, maybe you know somebody. Listen, go run your, go do it. Go do it. Hope, hope you survive it so that you can come back to a person that you might know who actually loves you and said, I told you it was wrong. You thought I hated you, but here's, here's why. I want to love you now. I want, to, I want to bring you in, scoop you up when nobody else wants you anymore because you know what? Everything talking about love and all this stuff, I'm so, I am so encouraged. After that little crying fit I had out in my backyard, the Lord so encouraged me. I, I, I'm telling you right now, we have been ordained to this moment. And people can call us names. I'm so used to it. I don't even read my own mail anymore. <laughs> Seriously, it's amazing. Here's the thing. When you obey God, you're going to be prophetic and you're going to wind up being biblical always. And the thing is, you know what? Truth is something that those who are looking for truth, they'll find it. Yeah. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. They, they follow me. We stand strong loving. You, we are not loving someone by just patting them back and saying, I'll just accept you any way, any way. No, 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 you wouldn't say that to somebody who's cheating on their wife and kids, would you? I just accept it. It's just fine. No, it's not just fine. You're destroying people. You're destroying yourself. Christian, Alan said it great today. Loving, inviting. Be a person that communicates the love of God. But listen, the love of God's not wimpy. The love of God is true. And so I want to encourage you. I'm going to ask you to stand right now, if you would. And I am, when this thing goes off, <laughs> I'm going to ask you to receive this. Father, I pray for these that are standing here. There may be people standing here right now asking, what in the world have I shown up to? I understand that. But Lord, I ask in Jesus' name that you would take these right here, right now, and God, that you would use us. Here we are. We would agree with Scripture, Lord. Here we are. Send us. We want to be used. We don't want to have boring Christianity. We reject spectator Christianity. We can't find that anywhere. We've tried to be seeker-friendly. We've tried to get the big church uh, pack-it-out thing, compromise this or that. That doesn't work. We want to be authentic. Lord, in Jesus' name, baptize us afresh for this generation, for this age with the Holy Spirit, and cause us, Lord God, to go forth loving and caring and kind in the name of Jesus Christ, God, may we be lights and shining armor. And Father, may we not be detracted by any evil that we might hear. Because Lord, we are following the King of the universe. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Who is our Lord, our God, our King, our Maker. And we will answer to you one day, not the Supreme Court. How, how ridiculous. The Supreme Court. No, no, no. The, those in black will meet someday the Supreme Court. And it will be you, Lord, the judge of all. 
May we walk worthy of your name, Jesus. May we be the most loving people on the planet, even in the face of being the most hated people on the planet. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.